Sunshine. <laughs> Yo, Wagwan, it's that guy. I'm doing a dread a dreadlock review here on G Money, but I want to put my hair up in a way for the video where it's kind of like up and out of the way, but at the same time looking cool. And honestly, I can't even like I have so much hair right now that I can't even figure out a way to tie this with its own dread. I might be able to pull something off here, but. I doubt it. So I'm gonna make do with whatever happens here. Use my headband to kind of help with the same. Oh, not bad actually. Not freaking bad. What a guan it's that guy. Yo, today I'm on um, GOMD's YouTube channel. Shout out GOMD for putting together this freeform dreadlock evolution of G Money. If you haven't heard of G Money, um, he is the late he passed away a few years ago. He was a uh, 22 year old Garrett Burton popularly known popularly known as the real G money was found dead after being shot and killed in his city. The rapper was pronounced dead after being shot on 1900 block of Baton Rouge. I'm saying it with the French accent. Yeah, so we've, we've discussed him in the past. Uh, I just wanted to revisit him today because it's always good to pay tribute to the legends uh, so this video starting off here would pretty much in the type 4 afro he's even got the side taper going on here with the afro in the back I've definitely been here at this stage of my life rocking the afro with a fro pick in the back and I even had the fro pick with the black panther fist on it to stand up for black people i love the fro the afro was probably one of my favorite stages in my hair journey besides having dreadlocks and it's just a lot of fun it's really just a lot of fun having dreads and having an afro beforehand and having an afro was a great way to start getting into free form locks so what we see happening here is with uh, the real g money in 2014 still rocking fro it's got the headphones on at this point with it and you know this is a pretty typical hairstyle and it's crazy even back then in 2014 nobody has dreads in the crew but every, more people have braids and froze and nowadays in Florida it's like everybody would have dread so the culture is definitely growing and you know here we see his fro coming in a little bit uneven in some spots usually afros, afros grow faster on the top I always remember my afro being longer in the middle than on the side. So as we continue with his hair, it starts to grow out. It's starting to get a little bit nappier. It's starting to get some bleach put in there as well, adding some color. And um, at this stage, like this could be achieved with the sponge, the dreadlock sponge, um, but you know, also achievable with just free forming and cold water rinses. We see that he's still got the side taper happening here pretty well. And it's a good look. I mean, the side taper very popular. Here, you know, we see the lineup on his front still happening, and we start to see now the difference of his hair starting to form into locks. And at this stage, you know, I call it the baby dread stage, the budding stage. This is where his roots and well, more so the tips are actually starting to lock together, creating that foundation for his roots to now lock up as well. And this is actually a, a really sick look for him uh, to be rocking. Um, I like all the crazy little loops and kinks that's going on with this fro. It's got a lot of new growth happening on the top as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's really starting to take shape. Um, I like the wildness of it and how uneven everything is. It's just kind of got a mind of its own. It's a true dread fro, which came about pretty quick, just in under two years. He's got this dread fro growing up, going on just like Bob Marley. And of course, you know, we know that these types of dread buds will grow into big ass Congos if left untouched and let them to grow without separation. So a lot of, a lot of clips of him rocking the fro. Uh, even some of these dreads starting to fall down in front of his face, even though they're in the baby dread stage still. The real G Money definitely has uh, had some of the most iconic locks 
uh, freeform locks in the game to be because like you don't really see many people with this style and even when people try to recreate it with crochet hooks you know it's still being recreated and it's not the original style now some people saying that his hair could have been crocheted a little bit into this shape I have seen tutorials on YouTube um, showing how to do this with his hair and it's basically like wicking his hair but with just less crochet hook happening uh, but I just I still don't really feel that G money was really doing that with his hair he was a true free former that embraced the dread fro to its fullest potential and you know he really keeps it clean by keeping his taper and his front edges lined up and it's a pretty easy way to do that it's a really easy way to keep your freeform locks looking a lot cleaner and presentable easily by just keeping your taper lined up so in 2016 now we're about three years in you can see his fro is still pretty wild and standing up crazy to think that after three years of growing your hair it's still standing up like this and that's one of the remarkable feats of G Money's hair that's what made it stand out so much was the fact that it was never really pulled back or you know laid flat it always had a mind of its own and he always just rocked it as natural as possible besides that that taper that was going on there at the front so I'm always intrigued seeing um, pictures of dread fros like this. And you know, honestly, like Bob Marley's dread fro was very inspirational for myself in terms of wanting to achieve similar hairstyle because I knew that my hair type was um, rather identical. And I wanted to see if my afro would turn into something very similar of what Bob Marley was doing. The real G money has even better hair than Bob Marley to rock the dread fro and it's just crazy to see how wild it all is like it looks so sick it's a shame that you know he passed at such a young age because he definitely had big things coming in his way in life he was moving in a productive progressive fashion so it's honestly very shitty to see young people slain in the streets like this and nowadays like it, it's always been a part of the rap culture but you know like even in toronto here like it's pretty bad seeing artists shooting each other in the streets dead because they're just rival rappers and it's ridiculous that you know that sort of mentality and jealousy is a part of the rap game and it's like you know everyone's in the same culture together trying to make it why have to beef with each other you know it's not it's not even necessary it's just pretty sad you know so the the locks now four years into the road maybe three years in almost on his fourth year they're starting to drop down on the sides a lot more but we also see a lot more congos coming in on the top and on the back of his head you know nothing's really settling settling down and uh i feel like because of the way he's growing his locks it shows a slow growth over the years because there's so much congoing happening and the afro is always standing up we don't see any length dropping down in front of his face or down his back so it kind of shows a slow progression this could also be him just having a slow hair growth pattern in general uh, but we can definitely see that his hair is super thick I don't see any signs of dandruff or buildup happening in his locks I mean I find that to be a big benefit of living down south uh, it's a lot easier to maintain your locks it's a lot easier to keep them moisturized and dandruff free um, living up north in the cold here I don't have that same benefits so I kind of struggle with the buildup a little bit sometimes and the dandruff and the dry skin so people down south you guys got that perfect climate for dreadlocks to happen this shot here showing his showing that he's still got that taper I don't know how often he would be getting his hair tapered up like this. I would think at least every two weeks to three weeks, he's keeping it all fresh. Um, we can really see some clumping happening on these back free forms. I would have been very intrigued to see where his dreadlocks went in the years to come because they were coming in 
super friggin thick and they would have just been like gunplay style if anything uh, had he kept them going this photo here looking pretty cool because it shows him in the suit it shows that freeform locks can look good in the business attire and you know this is one thing that i like to um commend because I feel like business locks are a thing and you can look business professional with wild ass hair because for me ultimately it comes down to your appearance your not even your appearance but it comes down to your professionalism it comes down to your skill set and your mindset and your attitude for the job not necessarily your hair your hair has literally nothing to do with the job so the, so let's avoid that being a discriminatory factor with people with locks and thinking that you can't have a regular job or whatnot. Just go for it anyways and show them that you are the right person for that job. Of course, a lot of these people like G Money out in Florida um, don't have to worry about that because they're out trapping in the streets, bringing in that cash flow ways that they can. Uh, but it was just good to see him in that business attire anyways. Um, this is the video now that I first saw G Money and was brought into his, um, I guess, spotlight for the first time that I brought him on the Not Nation channel. Uh, and his dreads were just so iconic at this point. This is probably his top point of having like, you know, dreadlocks in the game of just being legendary. And, uh, and I will put that, I will put his free fo freeform locks in that legendary category because you don't really see too many people replicating or recreating this look very easily. This shot shows the big Congo that was happening at the back of his head and uh, just how big his afro was actually getting over the years. Kind of turning more into like a mullet type in the back, like the back afro dreadlocks were really dropping at the point. Uh, but the top ones being so big and so voluminous, they weren't able to drop down. Crazy to see his growth over the years. You can just see his evolution and his face even. Um, you know, and I guess during these years of his life from 17 to 22, like you really do see a lot of change in the facial structure as well. So, I mean, he was definitely, you know, becoming an adult. And that's why it sucks that it, you know people's lives get cut so short before they can even really appreciate their whole life. You know his freeform locks. At this point, like again, he's never wearing them up. He never ties them up or back. Always just wearing them as is, and that's that's an amazing thing. It's actually really hard to do that because most people, when they attain dreadlocks, they want to style them. They want to pull them up. They want to put them back. Um, and it's good to not do that because you don't get that hairline tension at the front of always pulling your hair back. You know, literally you won't get headaches from having tightened braids on your head or a tight ponytail. Even having a dread bun on top of your head all day can be heavy and you will feel it in your neck muscles. Um, so let's all take a note from G Money here and let's wear our hair down uh, as much as possible. Really embracing the way that our locks are naturally to be uh, and let's avoid having any resistance and, and restraints on them with the, the use of rubber bands and hair ties so ending off the video here with my favorite view of his locks um, this shot really shows the volume and the clumpiness and the thickness of his locks and how the front taper actually works in kind of creating its own little style I feel like this shot here was the the best shot of his locks considering that it's one of the only shots that shows us with his hair falling down um, and all the rest of his shots you know his, his dreads were still kind of being wacky and having a mind of their own in that baby dread stage so um, definitely big shout outs to the real g money appreciate what you have brought to us on this earth while you were here and your lock legends will forever live on through these videos through the internet and through people in the culture themselves so big respects to everybody out in florida uh big respects to the g the real g money fam out there and a big appreciation to everybody that suggested me doing this video on him to revisit uh, a legend himself 
but I'm gonna end this video here I appreciate you guys stopping by please smash that like button down below it's a very simple and easy way to support this channel and there's no reason why a hundred thousand of you shouldn't like this video because we're all watching it right so let's let's make the family grow and um, and that's about it you leave a comment let me know your thoughts and I'll definitely see you guys in the next video so until next time peace out one love say happy and natty and I'll see you guys tomorrow God Adios. Give me a shine.